I got a bird feeder. It's made to go on the window, but it's not that easy to set up. Actually not that complicated. I'm just feeling very impatient right now. That's what it, that's what it looks like. There it is, window bird feeder. Anyways, hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Is it bugging anybody that I'm not using a microfiber? This is what I had. There's a bathroom right over there. So I just grabbed a washcloth. I figure it'll do the trick. As long as it's dry and there's no residue on the window, then that's all it should take. This is not the point of the video, though it's not not the point of the video. These windows are brand new. They're only like nine. 10 months old, so they should clean up just fine without the microfiber. Stuff doesn't really seem to stick to them anyways. As long as I keep turning that cloth over, then that should dry the surface off and get any residue. Get that nice and clean. Wish I had newspaper. That, that's the way to clean a window. Those cleanest and sparkliest windshields I ever had were back in the newspaper days. So this one goes on with an adhesive. I've always want, I need to back up. One, I have a grow light to unpack and a new plant. So we're gonna see all that in just a minute. This requires some preps. That's why I'm starting with the bird feeder. As I was saying, always wanted one of these, but the thing is suction cups. They've never stuck to my windows. When it gets cold out, they just fall off. This one uses an adhesive, which, I don't know, it's not that attractive, but I don't think the suction cups really look all that good either. I'm not really doing this for beauty. This is more for fun. It's so the cats can sit here. Cat, uh, the old guy, he can't get up here anymore, but he can watch the birds eat. Well they eat their food. I think the, uh, the birds probably won't like that. No. We'll see about that. There are other ones that I might try out that have like a two-way mirror on them so that the birds can't actually see it so they don't get startled. That probably would have been a smarter way to go. But this was cheap and it could be delivered today. So it's giving it a try. I'm a little bit apprehensive though because it came with two of these and it came with four of these adhesives and it's specifically because they just anticipate that at one point these are going to fail and you're going to have to do it again. That's what it said on here, that's what all this is about. To solve the installation instability, we designed the suction cups as adhesive sheet, which is why I got them, thinking that that might be more reliable, but then it says that, well, here's a backup set because apparently they, it'll still just fall off. They say to put this on here, use this as the stencil. Oh, you know what though? I should have marked the window. Hi, Turbo. You gonna be my helper? You be part of the solution or part of the problem? You're gonna be part of the problem. You excited about your bird feeder pumpkin? This is gonna be fun put the window back up and pull it back down and put a little piece of tape where I want the bottom of this to go. And I have to remember that I'm doing this all like upside down. Press the bubbles out, get those squeezed out, missed a few. And I think it says on here to wait an hour. Squeeze off excess air bubbles by hand. Let stand one hour. That's why I'm doing this now. So that can sit for an hour. And in the meantime, can, uh, open up this plant light and look at some other stuff. Was that fun, Punkin? You like watching me hang stuff from the window? I think that you will enjoy the bird feeder. Here's the new plant. You were like, yeah, isn't it beautiful? Uh, it's not the best lighting. That's the whole point of everything that's going on here. Now, probably several minutes into the video, <laughs> go ahead and show the new plant and why I have a new grow light. This is a Picasso or Sensation, Sensation Picasso Spasophyllum, Peace Lily. Wanted one of these for a very long time. I really like the variegation on them. Pretty picky about variegation, so it took me a long time to find one that I was willing to pay for. This one, the variegation is splotchy and in chunks, as opposed to just entire leaves being covered in just white speckles. That's not my favorite type of variegation. Look at the stems. Aren't the stems beautiful? I'm keeping this in the fish tanks, bathophyllums. They like the warm circulating water and the nutrient-rich water, especially, that you get from the fish. So this is where this is going to be. I got this in the mail a couple of days ago. And can you see what the problem is? You see, it's like, it's reaching down <laughs> for the lights. When it came in the mail, it was up and stretched out looking beautiful. There's just not enough light over here. That's where this comes in. This is a grow light that I think I could make work behind the fish tank. Maybe. We're going to find out. So here it is the uh, glorium that was noisy i should try again all right here it is this is the glorium 20 watt 68.9 inch it said on the listing 71 inches well so that was just the light it's just one of the saucer disc type grow lights you can put a plant down on top of it and the weight of the plant is supposed to keep that upright i'm thinking since this is somewhat of a unique 
setup here. It's not really that unique. It's just, these don't clamp on to the rim of the tank in a way that would be beneficial to getting a light over the plant. Because most clamp lights, they clamp like this, and then the light would be pointing, so it'd be pointing that way instead of it. Listen, it made sense in my head. I feel like this was a necessary thing to get. The reason I picked the Glorium, that's very important. I picked this one because it could get here the fastest. It was the right height and had the fastest shipping. That's pretty much it. And it looked like the base was something that I would be able to put underneath the fish tank and then build it up from behind the tank. Uh, I do think it'd be smart to mock up this setup to make sure it's even tall enough because I'm just having trouble trusting companies these days and I feel like it's probably not even going to be tall enough to actually get up above the light, above the plants that is. Pardon the twist, that's for Pumpkin. Pumpkin loves twist ties. I'm always leaving twist ties waiting around for her. Pumpkin! Pumpkin, you get the twist tie? No, okay, she, no, she doesn't want it right now. You're not being helpful, you're being part of the problem. Right in my face, would you sit? Turbo sit, have a seat, have a seat. <laughs> Turbo sit. Okay, back up, back up, give me some space, thank you. Have a seat. Good boy. This won't know until I try to put it together right, so I'm going to throw it together and see if from the outside if it's tall enough, and if it is, then get it installed underneath the tank and have a better look at it and get to see the plant better because you know, hopefully there'll be a light on it. Uh, just realized, might want to see the instructions. That new box to play with, Pumpkin? Pumpkin loves a nice new cardboard box to play with. I, the instructions, it's not all that complicated. You take these pieces and then you just keep doing this with them until you get to the end and then you put that piece in the end and you hook this piece to this piece and you plug it in. It doesn't look like the cord needs to run through the pole. So that's good, which makes sense because this is completely flat. So there's nowhere for that cord to come out of the bottom. It would just be lifted up if that were the case. Okay, this is it. That's as tall as that goes. I wondered, I figured, I bet they did the 68 inches to right here. Well, no, that's that's definitely closer to six feet. Doesn't fit, then it's just gonna be a smidge too small. Turbo, do you mind if I, can I, you gotta move. Turbo, you gotta move. Go on, get out of here, thank you. Okay, height wise, get that lined up down here. I. Kind of, not really. I need something that's just like six inches taller. This will do for now, probably for several months, but I was hoping for something that I could like have here for a very long time. So it need to be a good foot higher than this. There are ways around that. So instead of installing this underneath the tank, cause that would mean just having to do a whole bunch of stuff that I don't really feel like doing. There's electrical stuff and equipment and all kinds of stuff in there I'd have to gut out in order to get this plate underneath there and then get this run back behind it. I'm not gonna do that since I'm probably going to have to rig something up to lift it up higher and also be able to clamp it down from inside the stand to hold it upright. I'm just gonna get plugged in, see how it looks, and talk more about the plant. There's not much else to say other than I think it's a really pretty plant. Okay, so there it is. Can you understand the problem now? See, that's as high as it goes. I would like for it to be up higher. This has been on for about 10 minutes. It's already very, very hot. It's only 20 watts. This should not be that warm at 20 watts with LEDs. So that's something that I'm going to have to keep in mind here. I'm gonna give this a few days, see if the spasophyllum pops itself up, if it writes itself. Also, I can see I need to get in here some oil clean those lights off. Couldn't tell that before because it was so dim over here. Uh, we'll talk about it some more and see if the spathopylum responds and how it looks. Oh, and the, the bird feeder's up. There is one slight problem with it though, and it's that I think it may have made me break the window. It, it didn't actually do anything, but now the window won't stay up on its own. I don't know if it's because of the weight. I didn't fill this basket all the way, so hopefully that's not going to be a problem moving forward. I'm gonna do some reading. I also realized that I need to look into safety with these things. Like, am I just going to be teaching birds to fly into windows and then end up being responsible for the deaths of who knows how many beautiful little birds because I put this thing in my window? Is that something I have to... Th will that happen? <gasps> Did you see that? Did you see that? It's only been up for five minutes. Did you see the bird? Okay, I'm gonna step back. I'm gonna step back. It knew not to fly into the window. This is fun. It's actually gonna work. I didn't think it was going to work. This is really, I just put this up just a few minutes ago. There was already a little wren or chickadee or something. I think it was a chickadee wanted to get on there. Might have been a titmouse. It doesn't matter what kind of bird it was, but did you see it? I'm gonna put the camera over here and see if it happens again. Hmm. I can't say there's a noticeable difference. Is that really surprising? It's been about four days. 
you're not going to see much happen with a grow light in four days. There is a good amount of growth coming out from the middle. What I would expect to see in a proper grow light after four days, or really after a day or two with a plant like a spathophyllum, would be leaves starting to point up at the light fixture. I didn't mention this does have different modes for seedling growth and just regular plant growth and then a different mode for flowering and a timer. So three hours, nine hours, and 12 hours. So whatever time you want it to turn on, you just hit the timer button and it'll run for that many hours and turn off after whatever you selected and come back on the next day. That's nifty, that's nice. The modes, there's the, I have it on just regular plant growth. This is supposedly flowering. I don't think it, that's right, but that's what it says. And then this is seedling, and this is just the adult plant growth. The majority of these lights that I'm seeing on Amazon that look like this generally run from about $40 to $70. This one was, I think I paid $54 for it. What, that was with a coupon, might have been $49. You can get some pretty decent grow lights in that range. There are definitely better options than this. So this is not going to be a keeper. I'm going to send it back. Thing else to note here, look at how close this is to the foliage. This is like right, well, okay, I didn't have to move it. It was right where it was. There's not much distance here at all. And that's for a spathophyllum, a peace lily. This thing should be scorched if this were a proper grow light for this kind of plant. Remember, spathophyllums, they're already low light plants. They don't need a lot when it comes to brightness. So it shouldn't be that much of an ask with a grow light to get some nice movement out of the plant to see it start to lift itself back up. It has lifted itself a little bit, not like it should have with a proper grow light. Again, you see how close it is to the foliage? If this were a proper light, this thing should be scorched right now. At the furthest distance, there's maybe, uh, I'd say that's about eight inches from here to right there. The closest, there's like barely even an inch. Like Things are almost touching right there. And yet the plant looks fine. So that's my final verdict on the light. I'm gonna go ahead and call it garbage. Not worth it. Gonna order something better and more appropriate and send that back. Soltech makes some great grow lights. I'm probably just gonna find a pendant that I can put on a little bracket right here on the wall that will arch over. And perhaps even maybe at some point do it so I have two of them to light the tank and the plants because I need a planted light for the plants as well down here. We'll see on that. I have a thing about light pollution. I don't like light fixtures where you can see the bulbs and just have light flooding out all over the place. So that'll just be a personal thing that I'll have to, that was a lot of hand, sorry, sorry about all the hand. That'll just be a personal thing, personal preference for most people. For me, I need my lights in a pendant and preferably in a canopy on top of a tank. I'm building a canopy for this to hide the lighting that's right here because I just, I don't like looking at it. I know the rimless tanks are really popular and I think they look cool, but to me, I just, I hate, I hate the way the lights look. I want all that covered up. I just want to see the fish. Again, that's just me. It's a matter of taste. It really doesn't matter. It doesn't really have anything to do with whether or not this light works. And I'm saying, yeah, it works. It's bright. But again, it's a peace lily. This should, it's, no, this doesn't make sense. If this were a good light, this plant should be fried by now. And it's not fried. And it's barely made any movement upwards since putting it there. That was fun, but I'll say waste of money. Going to return it. Glad I didn't gut the stand out and try and make that fit underneath here. I would be very frustrated. I have to pull all my filtration pads and equipment and electrical out from underneath there to have gotten that in there. I'm really glad I didn't do that. Like I said, um, Soltec, they're very expensive, but they're nice looking lights. That's kind of the thing here is I want it to look nice. So Russo, 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 Bank Care, they have some really nice lights with an adjustable angle on them. Those would be great options. There are a lot of other ones to choose from. These ring lights are just very popular. I've had some success with them over terrariums. Not this brand in particular. I think it's just been luck of the draw, really, when it comes to when I've had success with them and when I haven't with the ones that are really cheap. Like the little $15 puck lights you put right over a plant. Sometimes they're great. Sometimes not worth it. I'm going to say this one wasn't worth it. There's a lot that go into plant lights looking at par and daylight intervals and things that I have talked about in other videos. I'll try and find the links and put them either at the end of the video or down in the description. Maybe both. This will do. In the meantime, it's at least something for the plant. But if things aren't in the right wavelength and have the right power to them and the proper diffuser so that the right wavelengths are getting through to the plants, they're kind of just, it just becomes a decorative thing. 
I could probably throw an old CFL bulb on a clamp from somewhere over here and have better success. But on the bright side, it's providing some really lovely lighting to look at the new plant. It, it, there it is. It's beautiful. A very fun spathophyllum. Not much else to say about it other than the variegation is very pretty. It's not the muddy speckling. Generally, you get more of a stripe and a chunky variegation with the foliage on this one. The sensation, if you can find the sensation Picasso, it's when you get those really big chunks of white and not as much of the modeling. That's my preference, but that one's not always easy to come by in the States. I think it's more popular overseas, but here, I don't see that one quite as often. This is what that was supposed to be, but I don't think it is. Time will tell. It needs to do some more growing. Let the plant grow. It'll be happy in the tank. I am going to be pulling it from the soil blend that it's in and putting it into a clay pebble, like a sort of situation, or I may just use some of the old ceramic media that I have for the biological filter in here in something that's rectangular that will fit over the back so it has more room to grow. That'll be happening down the road because I have to like jerry-rig and make my own thing for that to work in that spot, but we'll get there. It'll happen eventually. Okay, and then the bird feeder. There's it's nothing on there right now. I have seen birds on it, but never when I've had the camera on. I pulled the blinds down some so that they have more privacy. You make a, I don't know who they are, but someone, <laughs> it's out there. You can find two-way mirror film that goes on the window. You can just cut it out and it peels on and off. I may end up putting that behind the bird feeder because my little fantasy of the cat sitting here relaxing, watching birds eat, that's, that's never going to happen. It's going to scare the birds off and I don't want to scare the birds. So that's something to keep in mind. Also, I should have put it up here in this corner instead of down there. I had it in the middle. I don't think I told y'all. I moved it because that didn't make sense as far as being able to see how the window goes. But I think up there in the corner would have made more sense except that the where the window has to fold to pull out or the angle that you have to use to get the window to come out, that really, it just wouldn't have worked. That was about as high as I could get it to get the window pressed back in. So you have to like lift it and pull it and push it back in. So it has to go to, it wouldn't have worked. That's as high as I could put it, but I think it's fine. I did a very light amount of reading about whether or not these are a good thing or bad thing. When it comes to feeding wild birds, it's always a mixed bag of people saying, don't feed them and only feed these things. I try and just stick with the black safflower seed for the most part. I avoid some corn. There's some corn that got mixed in there from a cheaper seed blend that was just in the bucket from I don't even know how long ago. And then when it comes to the window thing, I did see some things basically just bring it down to, well, don't stress the birds out. That defeats the purpose, right? So the mirror film would probably be a good idea. That's something I will probably end up doing. Thanks for hanging out for this nonsensical Midweek vlog, don't do these very often, but there's gonna be a garden tour coming up. The noise from the construction outside has gotten to a point where I just can't really get much done out there during the week. So I thought I'd bring y'all along while I unpack a mass produce piece of garbage, grow light and get to show you this new fun, beautiful plant. I am very excited about this plant. It's so pretty. I love the variegation on there. And there has been some movement. There is some growth coming out of there. Just, it's the fact that the light is this close to it. The leaves haven't, stretched upward at all although i guess they don't need to when the light is that close the distance does make a difference so i could put it back here and see if anything happens if they reach for the light i will put an updated comment and pin it down in the description as to whether or not i see the leaves start to reach for that light that would mean that this is a capable light at the very least but from what i'm seeing it is just it's just a light probably the head of a lamp that's being sold mass produced to micro influencers for their tiktoks or something like that and they've probably just rebranded it just a guess i think that might be the case with a lot of these lights but that's all speculation i'm not saying for sure okay and maybe all the cheap ass chinese grow light companies can stop sending me five emails that did promote your crappy lamps not gonna happen not doing it if you want to send them to me you can but i'm probably just going to tell people that they suck if they suck anyways so everybody's doing having a great day great life everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you that's a nice leaf that's very pretty comment down below say hi what are some of your experiences when it comes to indoor grow lights like i said the money isn't always a factor in whether or not it's a good light i've used plenty of really inexpensive lights that worked great and then there are others that to me just seem like a gimmick. This one seems like a gimmick. Okay, of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.